Hi guys, the objective of this video is to have a look at classifying sedimentary rocks. In this video we will define all the terms we use to classify clastic sedimentary rocks. Clastic sedimentary rocks are the more common type of sedimentary rock we will have a look at. So what do we look at when we're classifying sedimentary rocks? First we look at clast size. Clast size is the size of the grains that make up our sedimentary rock. Then we look at clast shape. Clast shape is the shape of all the grains that make up our sedimentary rock. We also look at clast composition, so what material makes up our clast that then makes up our rock. We then look at sorting, which is a measure of how organised our particles are within our rock. We also look at the grain to grain relationships of our grains, are the grains touching each other or are they separated by some sort of matrix or cement? And finally we look at our cement type, which is the mineral that is holding all our grains together. So firstly in this video, as I have said, we're looking at clastic sedimentary rock, which is made up of detrial sediment. So the words are quite interchangeable, the word clast, detrius or sediment all refer to the grains of rock which make up our sedimentary rock. But first of all, we're concerned with the sizes of the clasts that make up our sedimentary rock. So our clast size is just the diameter of the grain fragments. And we divide our grains up into four groups. If we find a grain that is 2 millimetres up to 256 millimetres, we would classify this as gravel. Grains that are between 0.0625 millimetres up to 2 millimetres in diameter are sand. Silt, 0.002 millimetres up to 0.0625 millimetres. And finally, a clay or a mud grain is less than 0.002 millimetres in diameter. So when we are looking to classify a sedimentary rock, we will look at what percentage of the rock is made up of gravel grains, sand grains, silt grains and mud grains. If the rock is made up of more than 50% gravel sized grains, we would call it a conglomerate. More than 50% sand sized grains, it would be called a sandstone. If it's more than 50% silt sized grains, a siltstone, and more than 50% mud or clay sized grains, we would call this a shale. In naming these types of rocks initially, we do not really mind what the grains are made up of, as this is just a simple classification according to grain size. Now that we've looked at the grain sizes, we will then be interested in the composition of the grains. The classed composition is most important when we are classifying sandstones. And there are four main types of sandstones which we can classify according to their classed composition. First we have quartz sandstone, in which most of the sand sized particles are quartz. Lithic sandstone is when most of the particles are made up of any type of weathered rock. It can be either metamorphic, igneous or sedimentary. Wacky sandstone, which is sometimes called grey wacky, must contain more than 15% mud sized particles. And arco sandstone is a sandstone where a lot of the grains are made up of feldspar minerals. The next thing we look at when classifying sedimentary rock is grain shape. Here we look at how angular the grains are and how spherical they are. Grains that are spherical have, are said to have high sphericity, whereas grains that are quite oblong in shape are said to have low sphericity. Angular grains are obviously, as it sounds, angular, and then we have rounded grains that don't have any sharp edges. Angularity and sphericity actually indicate how far a grain has been transported. The further the sediment travels, the more the sediment is eroded and the corners and sharp edges are worn down. Therefore, more spherical grains have been transported longer distances from their source of weathering. There are four main types of grains, platy, bladed, spherical and angular grains, as you can see here. These grain shapes and sizes are quite important when we're naming conglomerate sedimentary rock, so sedimentary rock with a lot of gravel-sized grains. 
As you can imagine, in sedimentary rock where the grains are smaller than gravel sized, it is quite hard to distinguish whether the grains are platy, bladed, spherical or angular. So therefore we only really look at these sorts of names when we're considering conglomerate sedimentary rock. Conglomerate sedimentary rock that has rounded pebbles is called a conglomerate, whereas conglomerate sedimentary rock that has angular class is actually called breccia. Here we have an example of a conglomerate and a breccia. One thing we do look at when we're considering sedimentary rock is the maturity of the sediment that makes up the rock. We can look at the maturity by considering the composition of the clasts and the shape of the clasts. This maturity is a measure of the degree of processing of the sediment. So as I mentioned before, the grain shape shows us how far the sediment has been transported. We can also look at the composition of the grains, or what type of grains are within the sedimentary rock. When we do this, we consider the degree of unstable minerals that are left over. As we know, unstable minerals will weather first, leaving stable minerals behind. So, if there's only set stable minerals in a sedimentary rock, we know that the rock is quite mature, as a lot of weathering has taken place. These two things indicate how weathered the sediment is and how far the sediment was transported, and therefore the maturity of the rock. The next thing we will have a look at is the sorting of the clasts. Sorting means the degree to which the clasts are all the same size. Well sorted sedimentary rock is a sedimentary rock in which all the grains are the same size. Poorly or very poorly sorted sedimentary rock is a rock in which all the grains are different sizes. Now what do we call rock that is quite poorly sorted? If we have a poorly sorted sandstone, firstly it must have at least 50% sand grain size particles because otherwise it would not be classified as a sandstone. Then what if on top of this it had some pebbles? We would probably call this a pebbly sandstone. Same with if we had a poorly sorted mudstone. If this poorly sorted mudstone had some pebbles in it, we would call it a pebbly mud. Now we will consider the grain fabric of the sedimentary rock. The grain fabric is the orientation of the individual clasts and how the clasts pack together. If we have a framework supported sedimentary rock, this means that all the clasts are in contact with each other. Whereas if we have a matrix supported sedimentary rock, this means that the clasts float in the cementing matrix. Arnite, a type of sandstone, is a good example of a framework supported sedimentary rock. Sandstone is classified as an arnite if there is less than 15% of matrix within the sandstone. Wacky is the name we give to rock which is matrix supported. This means that the clasts float within a sea of matrix. Here are examples of matrix supported and framework supported conglomerate sedimentary rock. Finally, we talk about the cement grains that cements our clasts together. The cement comes from when fluid with dissolved minerals flush through the deposited sediment and these minerals precipitate out of the solution into the voids between the sediments. This precipitated mineral glues the clasts together. There are two categories, friable and indurated. Friable means that the sediment is weakly cemented and it can break off in your hands. Indurated means that it is very strongly sedimented and it will not break easily. There are four main common minerals that form cement in sedimentary rock. They are quartz, calcite, hematite and some clay minerals. We can test for when calcite is the cementing agent because it will react with acid and will weather quite easily. So if we are in the lab and we're trying to test what sort of cement is cementing our sediment together, we can drop some acid on the rock sample. And if it reacts and bubbles, we know that calcite is probably the cementing agent. An indicator we can use to see that if hematite is the cementing agent is whether the rock has a reddish color. Because hematite has iron in it, and iron will turn red when it rusts, when it weathers, we can see that this reddish color indicates that the cementing agent is hematite. But how does the sediment actually cement together? 
The sediment cements together through a process called diagenesis, which is a term often interchangeable with lithification. Diagenesis means there is a physical, chemical or biological change to the accumulated sediment, which cements it together. This occurs at temperatures between the temperature at which it was buried and the temperature required for melting the sediment. Diagenesis includes lithification, which is the compaction of the sediment as it is buried, and then the precipitation of the cementing material into the voids between the sediment. Diagenesis can also include dissolution, the precipitation of minerals, as I mentioned, and the formation of a pressure solution. So now we've talked all about how clastic sedimentary rocks form and the terms that we use to describe and classify them. Quickly, we're just going to talk about one particular biochemical sedimentary rock, which is rather important and will pop up quite often, limestone. Limestone forms due to the accumulation of calcium carbonate, which forms in the ocean. This is the accumulation of shells and marine organisms. This accumulated calcium carbonate gets buried and lithified just like clastic sedimentary rock and then turns into limestone. Here are a few samples of limestone just to give you an idea of what it looks like. One way to discover whether a type of rock is limestone or not is to drop some acid on it. Limestone, because of its chemical composition, reacts with acid and it will bubble and disintegrate when you put acid on it. Because limestone looks quite similar to some other types of rock, this is the best way to discover whether a sample is limestone or not. That's the end of this video. I will go over a summary on how to classify sedimentary rocks using a flowchart in the next video. I suggest you watch the next video because it really does summarize all the things we've just talked about quite quickly and easily.